There are two ways uh, that MPS-1 uh, can be treated right now that are uh, approved uh, or recognized as, as efficacious. The first is something called enzyme replacement therapy. Uh, that's where synthetic iguanidase enzyme uh, is given uh, intravenously to uh, an MPS-1 patient. Um, you can't take it by mouth because then your stomach digests it. And so the enzyme basically has to be delivered straight to the bloodstream. That has to happen every week um, because the enzyme doesn't last very long. And the other problem is that enzyme that you give intravenously won't be able to get into the brain. And so it's not going to help uh, the kids who have the hurler form of MPS type 1. So that brings us to the other treatment, um, which is called a hematopoietic um, stem cell transplant. And the stem cells can come from uh, a relative, they can come from you know, unrelated donor, or they can come from uh, cord blood uh, that's donated. Um, and basically what happens is uh, somebody who has uh, MPS-1 has to go through what's euphemistically called conditioning where essentially they're given high dose chemotherapy to um, eliminate their existing immune system and then they get a stem cell transplant which actually kind of looks more like a blood transfusion. The stem cells are in an IV bag and it's dripped down into their veins. What then happens is all the stem cells, most of them find their way back to the bone marrow and start growing and multiplying and making red blood cells and white blood cells and those cells make hydronidase. And so those cells can then secrete enzyme which goes to the cells of the body. There are also some stem cells that uh, squeeze their way through this blood-brain barrier um, and become the immune system inside the brain. And those uh, stem cells then secrete enzyme which can then help uh, eliminate some of the gags in the brain and avoid the severe uh, neurologic uh, consequences of Hurler syndrome. So um, obviously the current treatments have some issues, some limitations. Uh, enzyme replacement therapy has to be given every week for the rest of a child's or a person's life. Um, the enzyme doesn't last forever, and so like, you know, like a car that's run out of gas, you have to fill up the tank every so often. That can get expensive. Um, it's difficult because you quickly run out of veins to start IVs in, and so oftentimes uh, folks who have MPS-1 need to have what's called a central venous catheter or port cath and those work pretty well, but sometimes they stop functioning, sometimes they can get infected, um, so it's not a trivial undertaking. So that's enzyme replacement therapy. Um, stem cell transplant, you know, as you've heard, involves high-dose chemotherapy, and that's definitely not without its risks. Um, for the time that it takes for a person's uh, transplanted stem cells to start multiplying and making white blood cells and red blood cells and such. Um, folks are without an immune system. They often need blood transfusions or platelet transfusions. And then there's something called graft versus host disease, which you try to mitigate that as much as possible by finding a good match, uh, you know, immune system match, so that the transplanted stem cells don't get unhappy and start attacking the host that they're living in. So it's, um, it's difficult. Uh, they're all problematic and so I think what uh, prompts researchers uh, to look for treatments such as gene therapy is that they are ideally less risky and hopefully more permanent. So instead of you know, having to go to the gas station every week, um, gene therapy ideally basically gives your body the ability to make the hydronidase enzyme 
forever and ever and ever without having to, to recharge or tank. 